It's the ultimate showroom showdown. 64 cars across seven classes, tackling one of the world's most iconic racetracks for six gruelling hours. It's not just a test of man and machine either. It's a battle for brand supremacy. 16 manufacturers and more than 35 models have all gathered at Mount Panorama, fighting to win the top prize. This is the High Tech Oils Bathurst Six Hour. Hello and welcome to the 2017 High Tech Oils Bathurst Six Hour. It's Easter Sunday. We've got the biggest ever field for an endurance race here at Mount Panorama. 64 cars on the grid. Before we wave the green flag, let's have a look at the makeup of this race in closer detail. Sixty-four cars across seven classes will face the starter in this year's edition of the High Tech Oils Bathurst Six Hour, making this the largest field to take part in any Bathurst endurance race. Leading the field is Class A1 for extreme performance forced induction. It's where you'll find the ongoing battle between Mitsubishi's Lancer Evo and the Subaru WRX from Japan against the might of Germany's best, BMW, Audi and Mercedes AMG. Oh, and there's fast boards in the mix as well, in the form of the new Focus RS, defending champions Nathan Morecambe and Chaz Mostert. Class A2 is where you'll find extreme performance naturally aspirated cars. It's exclusively the domain of HSV, featuring a variety of club sports and GTS models and the sole CSV Mondo in the class. Class B1 is for high performance forced induction cars. It's the home for earlier generations of Subaru's WRX and some of BMW's finest machinery. Class B2 is high performance, naturally aspirated. Three Holden VE Commodores have entered this class, bursting full of talent and bravado. Last year's warfare between the Renault Megane and BMW 130i in the National Series shoots this weekend in Class C for performance cars. The Toyota 86 is once again the car to have in Class D for production cars. Also included in the mix are cars representing Honda, Mazda, Nissan and Mini. Rounding out this diverse field of cars is the Invitational class, led predominantly by saloon car teams from Queensland and Victoria. There's also the lone Hyundai XL, enabling car owner Scott Stevenson and his crew to live the Bathurst dream no matter what the budget. Well, it's going to be a huge day of racing here on the mountain. Two people behind the making of this great event are down on the grid. They're chatting to Andrew Roll. Thank you, Karelzi. Uh, I'm with event director James O'Brien. And James, uh, where else would you want to be on a sunny Easter Sunday than on the main scene for the Bathurst Six Hour? It's always great to be here, uh, particularly on a beautiful autumn day. And uh, I think we're making a little bit of history today, Andrew. Um, we think we're going to start 64 cars. Uh, I have to have a glance over my shoulder because there's a couple in pit lane. And, uh, and if we do, that'll, that'll set a record for, uh, for Mount Panorama and uh, going back to 1938. Well, congratulations on that one. That is a fabulous effort. Uh, we had a great event last year. It was the first one. How has it grown so much in just one year? Yeah, 50 entrants uh, in the first year, which uh, you know, was beyond expectations. And uh, we've grown that to, what, mid-60s uh, this year. Uh, the response from the production car community has been fantastic. So um, to all involved out there, thank you. And especially to uh, all the volunteers here today, a big thank you. And great to see so many punters here on the mountain watching on for what, what's going to be a great race. Well, what have we got to look forward to? Well, hopefully six hours of great racing and uh, lots of cars on the lead lap at the end. That's what I'm hoping for. Um, and uh, again, I, look, we couldn't do this without the support of our, uh, of our sponsors. And, uh, Obviously, a primary sponsor, a naming right sponsor, is Hitech Oils, uh, who have uh, signed on for three years last year. They've they've seen the potential of this race and they've jumped on early, and, uh, and we're very grateful for their support. And uh, it's great to have George with me to here today. And uh, with such a progression in just a short amount of time, how do you grow from here? Where do you go from here? How does it get better? Well, we won't focus so much on growing the quantity of the grid. We'll look at uh, the quality of the grid. So uh, hopefully, we'll see uh, more uh, newer and newer cars. Uh, better prepared teams and uh, we can start to get a little bit more picky and choosy with the, uh, the quality of the grid. Not that there's anything wrong with what, with what is here today, but obviously we do have a, a finite capacity. So you know, that, that's the area we'll look at next year. 
Looking forward to that, definitely. One final question with you. Tip for the race. Who do you think can take out this race win? Uh, a tip for the race will be a Clark car from A1. How about that? <laughs> Sitting on the fence. Great way to sit, uh, James. And, of course, you mentioned our sponsors. None of this could be possible without uh, George Gambino and High Tech Oils. George, great to see you back uh, sponsoring the Bathurst Six Hour. I'm glad to be back again with all our team from High Tech Oils to help James do another great event. And uh, you've, uh, you've signed up for the next few years. Uh, tell me, uh, how long will you be uh, the name and right sponsor for this fantastic event? Well, we've signed for three years. We had a uh, year last year, we signed with James, then we said, yes, we'll do three years. So we're committed for three years and we think we'll be here for a long time to come. And uh, high tech on oils are uh, synonymous with motorsport in the country? It is. It's um, starting to grow in the motorsport side of it now. We obviously sponsor a lot of things over the years, uh, local and you know, state stuff we do. But yeah, it's great. This is an iconic event for us. So we've actually put this as our main uh, source of sponsorship and promotion and do the best we can here. And of course, High Tech have got a great tent here. Uh, the punters are around. Where do they need to go and what can they get uh, from the High Tech Oils tent? Well, basically, we're, we're national. So you just ring the head office and we have one in every state and territory in Australia. We're probably the only Australian brand of oil that's nationally now. And uh, I put James on the spot and he sat on the fence. Who do you think is going to take out this great race today? Well, I know a few of them because we sponsor a few of them here as it is. So uh, the car actually behind me, he's a very good client of mine. So he won it last year, so I'm not going to say anything. But any of them are great. We have a great bunch of guys here and we sponsor a few guys now. So they're all good. We've got the high-tech car here somewhere down there. So anybody wins. It's all, as long as it's safe and a good race, we we'll love it. Well, guys, enjoy the race. It's going to be a fantastic event. The weather gods are certainly shining on us. Good luck to all the drivers. We're all set for six hours of scintillating action. Richard Krells, back to you. Thanks, Rolsey. Great to hear from James O'Brien, the event director, and George Gambino from High Tech Oils, who's put a lot into both of them into building this event and getting it to where it is. And um, what a foundation to build on after two years, 64 cars to start this race. And a great crowd here on Pitt Street and all the way around Mount Panorama as well. Thanks to everybody here at the circuit for coming out. Social media already uh, going off. Don't forget, join the conversation, hashtag B6HR to join us on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. 64 cars to take the green flag for the high-tech oils Bathurst 6 hour for 2017. It's Grant Sharon and Luke Searle on the front row, then Rod Samina, two-time winner of the Bathurst 12 hour, alongside Ryan Simpson, who's a Porsche champion, and then Dylan Thomas and Berwick Linton next. David Wall is just behind in seventh, and Devash and Padiachi, Garth Walden, and Jason Gomesell in the big V8 Falcon from 10th place. It's a perfect alignment. It's the biggest race in Australia, the biggest field Mount Panorama has ever seen in an endurance race. And it's about to start six hours of motor racing on Easter Sunday, the best racetrack in the world. We're about ready. It's the High Tech Oils Bathurst six hour for 2017. And it's BMWs on the front row waiting for the green flag. Perfect alignment. We're ready to launch the race. We're go on Easter Sunday. Good start from the CXE Evo. Down the outside of Rod Salmon and sweeps through. Ryan Simpson in that white Mitsubishi Lancers away smartly too, but it's the BMW M4 that leads a massive traffic jam up Mountain Straight for the first of more than perhaps 120 times today. And have a look at that. They're still funneling out of turn one. And the M4 has disappeared with that straight line speed advantage that it's got. The Searle car in second. Good start for Ryan Simpson in that white pole performance Evo, jumping up into third place. Good start to Dylan Thomas in the CXC Global Racing Car. There's Berwick Linton, reigning Australian production car champion, looking up the inside of the Mitsubishi in the BMW 1M and just backs out of it. Behind them was Garth Walden looking to do the same in the AMG A45. Very forceful start from Chas Boston, a little further back through the pack as well. He was actually threading the needle, going three wide into turn one and held corner for the first time, so he's a very lucky boy. But you'll see here in a moment how Grant Sharon will pull away. We saw going up Mountain Straight, but then the field will compress once they come back down to Forest Elbow. Good clean start to McPhillamy Park for the first time. BMW is a one and two. Timing showing Paul Morris behind the wheel of car number 62, but our driver nomination said it would be Luke Searle starting. Either can do the job. 
Luke Searle was superb in qualifying yesterday, did a 25.9, which at the time was the fastest ever production car lap at this place. He said in the media conference afterwards, good luck to anyone that beat that time. And he was talking about Grant Sharon, who did the 25.4 that put the bright red M4 on pole position. So that is a charging Ford Focus RS, and it's making up plenty of ground, and it's got a fired up Chas Mostert behind the wheel. That car started 16th, and he's already fighting with David Wall in the East Holiday Park Mitsubishi. He's got Garth Warden in front of him as well, so it's almost like a traffic jam as they come down into the kink for the first time. Mostert will make that spot up there on Linton as they come through the kink, but uh, it's going to be one of those races, actually. Here he comes now down the inside, so he's got Linton in front of him. Now gets down the inside of the Mitsubishi and makes up that spot. It's going to be fascinating to see how many spots he's actually made up on this initial start because I tell you what, he's been forceful and that's what he needs to do. He's not far off the top six now. The teammates go side by side. Down the inside is Garth Walden on the Porsche race at Davash and Padiachi. So the teammates swap spots. So at the end of lap one, it's Grant Sharon, Luke Sell, the margin 2.8 seconds. Then it's Ryan Simpson up to third, game for them. Dylan Thomas to fourth, Garth Walden fifth, Padiachi sixth. Then it's Beric Linton. Then it's Chaz Mostert. He's gone 16th to eighth in one lap of Mount Panorama. David Wall is ninth, Rod Salmon a little bit further back having started that car third. Conservative for Rod early in the motor race. It's not a bad strategy, to be brutally honest. Carl Reindler, meanwhile, from 58th is 30th at the end of lap one. And up the inside goes David Wall and retakes the position. This is what we're going to see throughout the Porsche today, isn't it? Because the great thing about production car racing is that all these cars achieve their speeds differently across the racetrack. And it's going to be nip and tuck as to where you possibly block and where you let the other drivers through. But at this point of the race, it's all about being smart, just making sure that you tick away this first in the race. Because when you can press like this, it's so easy to throw the car down the inside. One lock up, though, means you're hard into the other person. Exciting, isn't it? How good was that? What an opening lap. How good was the traffic jam up Mountain Straight and that shot of the cars still going through turn one as the leaders were going up to Griffin's Bend. Just incredible. 64 cars on the start. Cars in pit lane. And this was the car we touched on on the formation lap. Aaron McGill and Aaron Tepp, a couple of Supercar Series regulars. Aaron retired from Supercars at the end of last year. It was a reasonably last minute deal to get this program together, but his longtime sponsor, Battery World, jumped on board and unfortunately they've come into pit lane. So dramas for Aaron's Mitsubishi Lancer Evo. What I love about this battle here between Wall and uh, Chaz Mostert is they're treating it like it's a sprint race. Oh, no. We're already only 10 minutes into this. This is fascinating to watch. Yeah, five hours and 50 to go exactly right now. So it's busy stuff and Mostert goes past David Wall in the Evo. Beric Linton just in front in that BMW 1M. That's another really well proven car. He'll share that with Orange's Tim Lay throughout the course of the race. And now Wally looks up the inside of Chaz at the kink at the chase which even in a production car is a 250 kilometer an hour corner if you're in everything other than a bmw m4 i might add this is some seriously oh. forceful stuff but look at that there's the oh, story he's unhappy yep gloves got thrown out oh he made the start at least he can say he got to the start of the race so aaron tepp won't get any laps meanwhile this little squabble goes on lost it goes across the line he's in eighth place beric linton in seventh they had turbo boost issues in the DPO and super cheap Ford Focus RS uh, in qualifying yesterday, which restricted their pace. So basically they ran the session with zero boost and still did a two minute 30, which was a really good lap time. So the thing's got pace, but it is new car gremlins and a brand new car that was only finished a week before this race actually started. It's exactly what Chaz Mostert said on social media last night. He said it's just a couple of little niggling gremlins that you get with a brand new car. And I went down and spoke to the team just prior to this and I said, are all the gremlins out? And they said, we should be absolutely fine and clean, squeaky clean to go for this race this afternoon. So that's good news indeed. Well, the, the pace will be the biggest question mark for me because they haven't had an enormous amount of running this weekend, Brian. So um, if they have got the kinks out of it, if it comes down to an arm wrestle at the end and they need raw speed, it might not be there. But... Uh, it is a long motor race and that's a very, very smart team with some really experienced guys behind the scenes as well. So we've seen the Battery World car roll down into pit lane and Rolsey's found Aaron McGill. Thanks a lot, Richie. Aaron, uh, heartbreaking to see you come into just one lap. Uh, it all started uh, to go wrong on Friday. What happened? Well, I think I must have run over the Easter Bunny on Friday, mate. And it's just, yeah, we broke a ball joint which put it into the fence. 
um, and that just destroyed the car at the front end of it. The only thing wasn't busted was the battery, so at least battery well didn't let us down. <laughs> and then, look, we've just run out of spares and it's broken the diff as I've gone out of the, cut, uh, out of the cutting on the first lap. It just went bang, so we haven't got another one. That's the end of the story. I know we haven't got another one. <laughs> The boys must have put a hell of a lot of work in just to get you out there. Yeah, look, it's been non-stop since, uh, since Friday when it hit the wall. It was a bit, pretty big crash, obviously, and um, we've used every spare part we've got. And uh, that's the way it rolls, but I'm just tired of rolling my way, you know. <laughs> well, it was a miracle you got to the start line. If it's any consolation, you were the 64th car to start, uh, making uh, it a record-breaking field here at Bathurst. So okay. take that as some consolation. Well, Rosie, it wouldn't have happened without Battery World. I know everyone plugs their sponsor, but they've been so good to me, and I've let them down, unfortunately. And there's, you know, let's, hopefully we'll be back next year. It's a great event for what um, James has done and everybody, all the volunteers. Fantastic event. It's only going to get bigger. We'll be back. Well, put your feet up, enjoy the race, and we hope to see you back next year. No worries. Thanks, Rosie. Thanks. Thanks, Rosie. What a shame for Aaron McGill, but he took that in good grace, and we hope to see that team back. Bathurst Spirit fighting on, and we've got a car in the wall. It's car 69. It's the class leading car from class B2 all weekend long. B2 being the high-performance, normally aspirated category. He's gone past the grey Gomisal. Falcon. So this is Ford v Holden here, folks. Oh, wow, and contact with the Bilstein car. So he went round the outside, had a big lose, so might have got out on the kerb and then made contact. Keeping in mind, 12 months ago, that car was, in fact, involved in another incident and still actually managed to win the race. So mm. even though you might have dramas early on in this race, it doesn't mean for certain that you're going to be Unfortunately, out for the rest of the day, if they can recover and just keep on plugging away, they might just make it up come the end of the day. Yeah, Crick Corp Racing, um, they've had a really good program and did a lot of development and testing on that car coming into it with uh, Joe Crinnell lost Tony Virag, who's hugely experienced in big cars, and Anthony Loschialpo, who last year ran in the V8 Touring Car Series part-time. So, really experienced outfit. The, the beauty of this race, as you mentioned, is that you can afford some injury time, so you can sit on the bench for a bit, get the car back into the game, and still get yourself on that Bathurst podium at the end of the motor race. And we're just waiting and we hear safety cars. So yeah, safety car boards and flags for the first time today. There were six safety car interruptions in the race in 2016. So the safety car comes out before the compulsory pit stop window opens. So that's an important factor as we're only 16, 15 minutes into this race, and we've got our first safety car. Very much like what we saw last year. I don't think anyone would be coming into the pits other than just a quick top up, but it will not count as one of their either three or four compulsory pit stops. Should mention a new lap record set by Grant Sharon out in front, clean air, with a 226.43 on his second lap. That is a new lap record. So we are under the high tech oil safety car. This is why the Falcon slowed down, Jason Domasal and he was minding his own business and unfortunately Tony Virag went round the outside, had the big slide. Now what's going on out of shot there, we understand is that Domicile's things run out of brakes and it's fired down the escape road at Hancock Turn and uh, had apparently what is quite a big impact down there. So that's, uh, that's a massive shame for those guys. That explains why he was going slowly on the exit of, uh, of the chase. We're gonna take a very short break. We're green at the end of this lap. We'll come back and bring you all the action in just a sec. Welcome back to Mount Panorama, the high-tech oil is about the six hour for 2017. The safety car is in, so we've got green flag running conditions at the end of uh, this lap, of course. And this is going to be really interesting over the course of the day. There's no overlapping before they get to the control line, which is under the bridge. So they'll just have a look at that with Luke Searle. I think he was okay, but you're not allowed to overlap before you get to that control line under the bridge. They were very, very strict on that in the driver's briefing. But as the field concertina's up, because some are braking for Hancock Murray's corner, it gets a little bit busy as Carl Reinlett, the 46 car with the light blue roof, continues to blaze his way towards the top 10, having started this race from a different postcode. So we're back under racing. Grant Sharon leads the way in the BMW M4 that's been the dominant car all weekend long. This is busy, up to turn two, Mostert round the outside, Devarsh and Patiachi's there. Garth Walden was making a move too. 
He was trying to work his way past on Dylan Thomas, but couldn't quite get the move done as Mercedes and Mitsubishi squabble on the run up into the cutting. We were lucky on that restart in the fact that there was no lap traffic in front of our leaders. So obviously that overlapping issue is going to be a major factor later on once we get those cars mixed in with those lap runners. But uh, so far not too bad on this restart. But Mostert, I tell you what, he is seriously being very aggressive in this first stage, as he has to be. Of course, starting down there in position 17, making his way solidly inside oh, the top 10. Wow, and this wait. is a big move now at the top of Mount Panorama, going into Skyline. Wow, McPhilby Park is going to see a lot of that action, I reckon, in this first stint with Chaz Boston. He's never been accused of not being completely committed behind the wheel of the steering wheel, uh, behind the wheel of a racing car, Chaz Boston. And he goes past Garth Walden, who gave him racing room. What a bit of racing that was. Wow. So the two AMGs from Garth Walden Racing resume being blind as turn. Devash and Padiachi just in behind the team boss. But Mostert now comes his way towards the top five great stuff and he's not done yet because he's working over Dylan Thomas as they come out of the elbow so that is fifth place he's about to be fourth let's see what an Evo is like compared to the RS focus in the straight line down towards the chase he seems to just to tuck in there but let's see how he goes under brakes as they go through the kink in the chase they're all a little bit of a waggle there from Chaz Mostert but gets the job done P4 Former Bathurst 1000 winner, he raced the 12 hour this year, led the early stages of that, driving a BMW for Ryan McLeod was brilliant. Unfortunately, that car was ruled out of the race, but he showed what he was capable of in a GT car, doing the same in a production car. So, Chaz Mostert runs P4 in the high-tech oils Bathurst 6 hour. He's passed Devashin Padiachi, Garth Walton and Dylan Thomas in a lap, and he now will hone in on the back of Ryan Simpson, who sits third. Sharon in front by 1.7 seconds. What a drive from Mostert, big move up the top, but Garth Walton using his experience, and he's been around here plenty of times, just bailing out and no point to fight for it. And we're told safety car, and it is safety car for the second time, unsighted by us so far. We are under safety car for the second time today. So just one green flag lap back under racing. Let's go down to pit lane and hear from the race leaders. I'm with Ian Sharon and Ian, I'm a massive BMW fan and that looks like one hell of a Beamer right there. Yeah, absolutely. It's a bit of a weapon. It's uh, got plenty of power in a straight line, as you can see. So, you know, off the start, we're four or five cars in front. It's good. And uh, first time the car's had a run? Yeah, this is its first race. So, you know, before this weekend, we only had, you know, probably a day of testing and that was it. So first race for it. So six hour race, all about tactics. What are yours? Uh, look, it's, it's just hard to tell. There's so many cars and there could be so many pit stops. And, you know, like it, yeah, we've seen a couple of safety cars already. So we've just got to take it as it comes and make the calls as it comes. So I think if you try and lock into a strategy too early, uh, you could get caught out. So you really got to roll with the punches. This is why we're under safety car. It's car five, Kerry McMahon behind the wheel, sharing with Doug Westwood this weekend, little BMW M3. Um, we understand they actually clipped the wall just coming out of Forest Elbow, just near the Bathurst Goldfields up there at the top of the mountain. So that is why we're under safety car and that car had damage and was in a dangerous position, which is why we're under our second safety car interruption of the day to recover that car. So it'll be great, Sharon, who leads the field back around to green. They've led the early stages of this race. They haven't had an opportunity to build an enormous margin just yet. So uh, it's going to be really interesting to see what they can do on the green flag run and how far ahead they can go. And check out the straight line performance of that M4 on the restart, pulling away from Luke Sell. We're back under green. We start number two. You can see on this restart that there's already some side-by-side -side action going down to turn number one. Then James Abella in the Subaru with Peter Patton in behind him looking down the inside, then going into Hell Corner. And the Subaru has been lacking a lot of top-end speed this weekend, so they might actually get eaten up by the time they get to Griffin's Bend. Yeah, they're actually talking about pulling the rear wing off that car to try and get it to uh, make it more slippery, take the drag out, but they weren't allowed to because if it's sold with the rear wing, you've got to race it with the rear wing. So, uh, unfortunately, they will have to battle on. But that car was in the top five fastest cars across the top in Sector 2 from the cutting down to Forest Elbow. So it's a quick race car, and that's a really handy little pairing too with Carrera Cup racer James Bella and Cameron Hill, the Australian Formula 4 champion, to 
couple of years ago. They're just hovering outside the top 10 at the moment. Uh, track temperature, by the way, uh, over 38 degrees. So that blazing sun has heated the track up. Ambient about 22 was the top for today. Light breeze blowing across the racetrack towards the east. And it's a nice day for motor racing. Lee Burgess is currently leading uh, Class B1 at the moment in that car that won this race last year. The current leader of Class C, the Auburn brothers, Kyle behind the wheel there, Blake waiting in the pits of that uh, beautifully presented gun. Let's have a look at a moment at the top. It's uh, the class leader in the muscle Toyota. Oh. Wow, into the fence. Big, heavy hit too. Coming on to McPhillamy Park for Car 88. One of the Queensland saloon car competitors. That's a fairly large whack too. That's the Luke Anderson, Chris Donnelly car. Hefty hit. They build those things like tanks, those saloon cars. It's Luke Anderson behind the wheel, but that's a big moment. So the saloon cars are quite loose across the top of Mount Panorama. Well, let's have a look at a HSV. GDS Coupe coming off the road at the chase just before the Hitachi Bridge. So this is a great scrap. Third, fourth, fifth and sixth all locked together. Look at Ryan here moving this car over on the racetrack trying to find a way past Garth Walden. You know that Walden's not going to give him an inch but uh, just as we saw there a moment ago he was a little wide coming out of Griffin's Bend that time by so it might have been an opportunity. There's an overlap here as they come through the left hand into the cutting but holding the inside line at the moment is Walden and look just in behind them David Wall is saying, you boys keep fighting because I'll come into this and I'll join it as well. The well, Rhyma thing's clearly got speed to burn over Garth Walden, but the Merck's a little bit quicker in a straight line, so it makes it difficult to overtake. This is a big story because this is the fastest car in the field still sitting in pit lane and they're now a long way down the order. They're back out, but that's a long stop and they're several laps off the pace. And even though they've got five hours to go in the motor race, to come back from here will be an enormous effort. That was stationary for eight minutes and 49 seconds, so there you go. Did Carl Reinley get by Garth Walden? Yes, he did. So we just cut away as they went side by side over the skyline at 170 odd kilometres an hour as the world disappears beneath your steering wheel. Uh, so he's gone through, so Reinley elevates himself to third place, Walden back to fourth, and they've just dropped David Wall a little bit. Let's find out what went on with the Sharons. Andrew Rolls on the spot. Thanks, Krause. Ian, an unscheduled pit stop there. What happened? Uh, Grant just said he heard a pop and lost a bit of power. So obviously a hose popped off. We come in. Uh, Jimmy was onto it, found it straight away. Just took a little bit of time to get it back on and get it up nice and tight so it doesn't happen again. But yeah, this is one of those things. New car. Yeah, it's what happens. Better it happens now than in five hours' time. Yeah, well, we've still got plenty of time to try and work back into it, so who knows what else is going to happen. We've still got plenty of speed, plenty of time. We'll give it a crack. And there's nothing like a challenge. Absolutely, we love that. <laughs> Good luck. Thanks. So we're an hour into the High Tech Earls Bath of Six Hour. Here's how the uh, classes look. It's Luke Searle leading the way, Ryan Simpson next, and Carl Reinler in third. Garth Walden is fourth. We saw that great fight for the final spot in the top three. Then David Wall is fifth. Devarsh and Patiachi sixth. Then Mark Eddy up to seventh in the TTRS. Then Beric Linton, Rod Salmon and Lee Burgess rounding out the top ten. So that's the Ridges leaderboard. The classes, that's how they stand. It's Graham Muir on top in the VE HSV in class A2. Brian Walden leads the way. The defending winners on top in their VE SSV red line in B2. The Auburn boys from Bathurst lead the way in class C. Jimmy Vernon still on top in D and Colby Cowan in the saloon car leads the way in the invitational class with thanks to Century Batteries. There's the leaders, Morris getting in. That very well-known floral Hawaiian shirt spec helmet jumps in and Luke Searle who has done a very, very good job this weekend. It's the best I've seen him drive. Lapping qualifying was outstanding. Controlled and measured out in front in the face of safety cars in this race. The drive of the day so far, there's been some great performances, but it has to go to Carl Reinler, who's ridden the Bathurst roller coaster this weekend, but he's down in pit lane chatting to Rolsey. Carl Reinler, 59th to second. Wow. Yeah, it was a lot of fun out there. Pretty crazy at the start. Um, it was a bit of a roadblock, to be honest, up until 
oh, halfway up the hill, I reckon. I thought I'd actually pick off a few more early on, but there's only so much you can do. We are in a four-wheel drive, and I did contemplate taking to the grass a couple of times, but uh, I didn't think it was probably appropriate. I'm sure the guys upstairs wouldn't have been too happy with me, but um, just plucked them off one by one. I've never really done a race like this before, so uh, as you can see, big smile on my face. I'm having a good time out there, and despite the drama we've had the weekend so far with... Um, Obviously the drive shaft issue earlier in the weekend and being relegated to rear of grid after qualifying third, we're um, back into a position that we're, uh, we, we feel we should be, where our car is capable of running. We've got Andrew in the car now. Um, it's up to him for the next at least hour or so to um, keep it up there and just nurse that car. And on that, I can bring news that car 29, which is the second of two cars from Garth Walton Racing's AMG squad, they are likely to get pinged for a pit stop infringement time, not being underneath 2 minutes and 30. Come back to that. Let's go down to Rawlsey again. He's been busy in pit lane, Rawlsey. I'm with Rick Shaw, Category C. You're right up there uh, fighting, for that, uh, f fighting for that first spot in, the, in Category C. How was your drive? Look, the drive was great. It got a little bit boring there at one stage because there's been a lot of yellows and safety cars. But once we're going and racing, I think that's what everybody wants to do here. We're just settling into a groove, really enjoying it. The, the Biodynamic RX-8 is going brilliantly. The crew's going even better. They're just doing a marvellous job. We're like a, a well-oiled machine at the moment. What are your plans from here? Well, just to keep trying to keep on the state's uh, lead lap of Class C so that when it gets down to the last hour, we can actually go and race. And that's our main prerogative, you know, just stay with the leaders. We don't have the horsepower in the RX-8 up the hill that they have, but we're much faster across the top. So, Beric Linton, I didn't pit the number 80 Alfera Bruce Linton BMW 1M, and they have stayed out, and as a result, have taken the race lead. Meanwhile, battle for position, Cameron Hill, Australian Formula 4 champion a couple of years ago. Young man from Canberra, who won the Formula 4 championship at Wakefield Park, not far from Canberra. It's a pretty big day and Alan Webber was on hand that day when he took that title watching on. So the Canberra slash Queen Bin connection. Enjoyed that. He's a terrific young driver, James Abella, Horsley Park Gunshot Car. Done a good job today circulating around, staying out of drama, but he's got pretty quick Paul Morris bottled up behind him. This race is really going to be a case of just survive until that final hour, that final stop. Get yourself on the lead lap, stay there and you'll be okay. If we do get a safety car, keeping in mind, the Beric Linton, Tim Lane, BMW, looking at how it's worked for them, I mean, they've been able to get one hour, one and a half hour stints, first stint, this stint as well. If they do it again, I mean, they're looking at making the race on three stops. Them being a Class A1 car, they've got to do four stops, so I'm not actually sure how it's going to work for them right now. I just saw a shot there of Robert Hughes exiting that car that stopped just before the dipper, and it will be a safety car. It's a busy old place, the mountain get to see what happened to the Allsport Motorsport car. The other one has been performing reasonably well. Hadrian Morale is behind the wheel, currently scored in 33rd place. So this is it pointing the wrong way. Was it helped? It was. It looks like it by car seven, which is Ryan Simpson behind the wheel. So does Linton and Lay pit? The answer is yes, they do. And as Brian was speculating before, I think they had to. We might be able to hear a little bit more from one of our leading cars. Andrew Rolls has found Jim Polisina. Jim, uh, we just saw a replay there involving your co-driver, Ryan Simpson. What are your thoughts? Oh, mate, I wasn't in the car. Couldn't see what happened. I don't think he's done anything. But, um, um, yeah, I think, you, I think we're right. Great start to the race from you. Uh, you seem to be having far too much fun out there at the front of the pack with, uh, with the lights of Chas. Yeah, it's great out there. There's a lot of respect amongst the drivers. Everyone's leave, generally leaving room. Car feels very strong. Uh, we'll be in a good position at the end of the race. How's your strategy going in terms of number of pit stops? Yeah, clockwork. We couldn't pick a better strategy, so we're right on it. Um, so, assuming we've had a lot of safety cars, so it's pretty easy to get it right. But uh, at the moment, we're, we're bang on where we want to be. So, we're under safety car. It's the high tech oils, Bathurst six hour. Take a break, come back with green flag racing after this. Mount Panorama, High Tech Oils, Mathis, six hour, and we're in another safety car period. Lights will be out on the High Tech Oils safety car this lap. It'll be Paul Morris leading the field back to green. Another restart where everyone in this field will hold their breath. 
and try and get through one lap and then two and try and get a race run going. Easier said than done. Well, so far today, yeah. Six in the whole race last year. I think that 500 mile mark we were talking about at the start, 130 laps, I think it's safe. I think we'll be in race record territory today. Away we go. Another restart. The high tech oils, Bathurst 6 out. And a beautiful afternoon in the central west of New South Wales in Bathurst town. And it's Morris, Simpson, Andrews, O'Dowd, Josh Heath in car 52 up to P5. Josh Heath in P5 in the Class D car. Impressive. That slipped under the radar. Nathan Morecambe is sixth in car number one, then Tony Alford in the TTRS is seventh. And there's some shuffled up cars in this top ten at the moment, just with cars staying out and not pitting. And bear in mind, those Class D cars have got one less compulsory pit stop to do. So, well, Josh Heath has only done the one pit stop so far in the two hours and no, three last, hours and 20 minutes. Yeah, they last pitted an hour and 20 ago, so... Yeah, they could probably go a little bit further. They are there on track position. They have only completed one pit stop, and all the safety cars have meant that their lap speed differential between the leaders, and they're probably 15 seconds a lap slower on average than the leaders, means that they haven't dropped off the lead lap. So Josh Heath is P5 in a Class D Toyota 86 on merit, 100% on merit, for just preserving and staying out there. And that's what we love about endurance racing. How good is that? And I reckon in terms of his strategy, he probably needs another safety car to come out within the next 20 minutes, and that will be his waiting goal, I reckon. So, because then he's almost going to be on the same cycle as those in front, with one more stop to go towards the end. Josh Heath, driving with his father, Greymouth, this weekend. They've got Megan, the 19-year-old, as the team manager this weekend, too. So it's the full family affair down there. It's turning out to be a masterstroke. It's some mixed up, muddled up results because of all this. Chris Sutton in the number three car that won the class last year, they're inside the top ten as well, so they're ninth. Now they aren't actually going to tumble down the order if we get some great flag running, but wow. And 46 gets a black flag for a restart infringement. That was on the previous restart. So that's the Richmond Ryan car. So they hadn't served that penalty yet. And uh, we're being told tar car number 23 will get a penalty too, which is the John McCleverty, Brad Zacker and Michael Zacker Invitational Class car. And that is the class leader in Invitational, the 25th outright in the saloon car class, and they will get a penalty for a restart infringement. Now, remember that before that I said I've got my own theory on I think a black flag's going to be given to somebody. It was car 46. Yep. I just didn't want to say anything at the time. And here it comes and in. And here it comes now. in right now. Yeah, okay. So all that hard work to get back on the lead lap, and they're only going to lose 32 seconds. They won't lose a lap through this, but they'll go right to the very tail end of that queue. But, I mean, that's the way this race is playing out. If you're on the lead lap after the final pit stop, it's anybody's game today. And all these safety cars early on have helped that. They've just kept cars that perhaps shouldn't be in contention. It's kept them in the race. And ordinarily, it's like drive through penalties would kill your day, but not today. It's not so much of a drama. As Ryan Simpson works his way past the Kyle Orford BMW 1M. 5.7 seconds behind the race leader, Paul Morris. Just going back to that battle for Class D again, so you've got Josh Heath, 33 seconds off the race leader. The next person in Class D is Chris Sutton in the number three Toyota 86. They're only really seven seconds away. Yeah, it's a good battle. And even Jimmy Vernon is third in Class D and still on the lead lap of the race in 18th place outright. So those Toyota 86s, they're remarkable things and they just pound around and by virtue of not having to stop particularly often in the motor race, they continue to go on. So they've done one pit stop in the first three hours and 23 minutes of the race. They've got to do two in the last two hours and 36. So they'll get punished a little bit in the second half of the race. And speaking of that outstanding performance, Rolsey's found them in pit lane. Graham Heath, uh, the Toyota 86 Class D car burning up the track. Yeah, it's going really well at the moment. Um, Josh is out there just circulating around. We've told him not to kill it off, but um, yeah, he's going really, really well, quicker than he's been around here before. So this is his first trip to the mountain, so yeah, really good. And uh, how was your stint? Obviously, you've uh, you set him up in, uh, in a uh, fantastic position. 
Yeah, look, I actually came in in third position, so he's put us up to the front. So, yeah, superb. Look, we were just shadowing the other guys. It's a quick race out there, a lot of safety cars, so we'll just have to see what happens in the next couple of hours, yeah. How's your strategy going with the safety car? Number of pit stops and what have you still got to tick off to, uh, to get through this race? Oh, we've got two more uh, pit stops to go, but we're on our strategy at the moment. So safety cars, we'll keep our fingers crossed, but yeah, all will be good on, sure. Class D car, overall podium finish. Is it a, is it a chance? No hoping, <laughs> no hope. No, no, look, I'll just be happy to finish, absolutely happy. So, you know, to do this with Josh, good stuff. And uh, what words of advice did you give him when you did your changeover? None. <laughs> and I'm not talking to him, I'm just letting him go. Absolutely, let him do his thing. He might give me some when he gets out. <laughs> well, he's looking great, the team's looking great. Good luck. Thank you. Cheers. There's some interesting emails going back and forth with race control as well. There's actually teams querying race control about the running order because they're going, how come our class rival is so far up the leaderboard and we're not? We're in identical cars, but that's just the way the race has played out. And there's still 233 and 38 to go, so I wonder, uh, I wonder what's more to come. But at the moment, there's going to be at least a dozen cars in the lead lap going into the final order if it runs the way it is. So, and they've all got plenty of firepower. And, and just to show though that point, how quickly those Class D cars. So Josh Heath was fifth two laps ago. He's now 12th. Um, and that's not a black mark against his name, that's just the performance differential between the Class A cars and uh, those further down the field in the classes. But it is great to see those class battles so strong throughout this race. And Chris Sutton closing in actually a little bit, it looks like, on Josh Heath and Jimmy Vernon still well within contention. So here in the game, where's the Sherrins? So they made the stop. Uh, so they're scoring 30th place now, so they're only one lap behind the leader. So they made that stop under safety car. So under the next safety car, which sort of feels inevitable, but um, I wonder if they stay out, get that lap back, and then worry about the strategy after that. Surely you just get yourself on the lead lap. I mean, Lazarus like come back from them so far. They were three laps down. They spent eight minutes in pit lane, Brian. <laughs> it's just stupendous, isn't it? How they can be back in the fight just about with, well, the second half of the race to go. I mean, that would have to be the biggest mountain story or mountain win, I think, in the history of this place. Speaking of the Sharon uh, entry, we're following it now under the Hitachi Bridge. Coming down, looking left, looking right on the number 11. Probably just opt to fall in behind. But probably will get in on the straight here. Well, based on the straight line speed of that thing, yes. it'll get everything on the straight. So that's another one down. So it's now 10 cars away from being on the lead lap, basically. Um, just an update from our friends at Car 77. That's the BMW 1M, Anthony Sewell, Adam Burgess and Craig Burgess. They've had a pretty shocking day. They had quite a lot of damage on that car, but they've spent some time in pit lane repairing the damage. Adam Burgess now behind the wheel of Car 77 and back out and uh, just got on the radio and said to his team, thanks guys. Nice Guess job. what's coming back out? It's the Nissan Pulsar. Oh, brilliant. Number 33 is just traversing the lane now. That's an amazing performance. That car blew an engine earlier in the motor race. It's 19 laps down. There is some seriously impressive great stories up and down this pit lane at the moment, which is great to follow. And uh, nice to have that car back out there. Look at this, though. It's all on at the front of the race because down the inside now and a change for position. Ryan Simpson goes to the race lead, getting underneath Paul Morris there at the chase. So another lead change at the moment as they come down towards the Hancock Tyres Murray's Corner and looking all over the racetrack, you can see at the moment that the Searle Morris entry is trying to find a way back past, but Ryan Simpson will now take the lead of the High Tech Oils Bathurst Six Hour after 62 laps. And considerably as well, meaning that uh, he's just going through the chase there now is about two or three car links in between them, so he's really giving it the boot. Well, I mean, this team has just sort of played themselves into the race because their tent car's in third. Here's a look, good run through the kink. So we got in the toe of the BMW, and much like the Focus RS, the short wheelbase hatchback style cars, a little bit less stable under brakes. And that's just a textbook mount panorama overtaking manoeuvre from a guy that's done a few of those in his life, Ryan Simpson, who's got records in both the GT3 Cup Challenge and the V8 Touring Car Series for most race wins in a row. Terrific driver, graduate from Formula Ford. He's part of the Sonic Motor Racing stable of young guns. 
the seemingly hundreds of drivers that Mick and Maria Ritter from Melbourne have churned out over the years. That amazing program down there. Um, stepped back from racing anything at the start of last season and hasn't driven too much in the last 18 months, but certainly hasn't. Got rusty, has he? Leads the race. A nice pass on Paul Morris and the Evo gets itself back in front. There's so many different strategies in this race at the moment. <laughs> Tell you what, my brain's going into overdrive because when you look at the leaders of Eden, they haven't pitted for quite a while. So in terms of Paul Morris, he's been in the car now since hour and two minutes, uh, hour and 12 minutes in this race. So he's in a stint now of two hours and 13 minutes. And they last actually pitted at two hours 17. So very shortly, sort of be coming up towards a window of pitting. Yeah, you're right. Even Garth Walden is 11th yeah. in car 45, but remember they stopped at the end of that last safety car. So they're out of sync with those around them, but they're only 57 seconds off the lead of the motor race. So, and they're on the lead lap. And it's different again when you go to the Ryan Simpson, Jim Policina car, because they last pitted for their second stop at two hours and 46 minutes. So again, two different variations of strategies for our race leaders, about half an hour difference. But they've still got so they've still got time to burn out in front of the race, don't they? They've probably got another 15 minutes at least at this pace to build a bit of a margin towards that next pit stop. Nathan Moore comes up to fourth. We're just running through the timing order to here, folks, because it's pretty busy and it seems to change quite regularly today. <laughs> uh, so it's often hard to keep up with. But Nathan Moore comes fourth in the DPO number one Ford Focus RS. So they're just hovering there or thereabouts at the moment. And, at the moment, they're just doing pretty consistent 231s. And actually, he's honing in on John O'Dowd. And last time around, I think O'Dowd had a bit of traffic, but he was three seconds faster than the Evo that's currently holding down third place. So Morecambe's coming. Tony Alford back up to P5 in the Audi TTRS. Jacob Andrews shuffled back to sixth place. Ben Porter is up to seventh. So car 29, which had a penalty early on for a safety car infringement, I think that was infringement v1.0 because uh, there's been four or five different iterations of those today um, they're back up to seventh place so that's the case sharing with Rob Woods and Devash and Padiachi. Timmy lays eighth so they let that race pit it under caution and have resumed Rod Salmon ninth so he's taken over the number 12 AMG from Nathan Antunis and Garth Walden rounding out the top 10 What's going to be a big point at this part of the race now is going to be driver time. Let's use this one as an example. So Garth Warner is currently in the car right now. They last pitted at three hours and 15. Now, Craig Baird did a stint of two hours and three minutes. So therefore, Craig Baird needs to step back in that car at least no earlier than with two hours and 27 minutes of this race to go. Otherwise, he will exceed his three hours, three and a half hours maximum driving time. And I hate to bring up old wounds, but that will be a familiar story for Craig Baird at Mount Panorama because if you turn your minds back to when we were fortunate enough, some people were fortunate to have two Bathurst 1000s in a year. Yes. The two litre race went the way of BMW in 1997. Um, and it was Craig Baird who crossed the line first with Paul Morris. Unfortunately, they were disqualified for exceeding Craig Baird's driving time. Fairly perilous moment. That's the 23 car that was actually leading its class. Let's check and see if they are still. Ash Jarvis back in front in Invitational now. So they, they had a penalty, didn't they, a couple of laps ago that they had to serve for that restart infringement. Off at the chase. Car 65. Proof that you give a guy a wrap and it ends up parked off the side of the road because CXC Global's day just gets worse with Jacob Andrews and Mark Griffith looking like their day's done. It doesn't look like it's buried. In fact, it looks like it's still sitting on grass. The problem with that part of the world is too that it's the fastest corner in Australian motorsport leading into a very heavy braking zone. I wonder if he's had a tyre go down or cut a tyre because he had a huge lose through the kink. I think the reason he stopped is because he's just gathering himself because he almost ended up in the wall. And one of our leading contenders, Tim Lay, had to take massive evasive action to get out of the way as his teammate, Beric Linton, gets himself ready to jump back in that car. So I think they've seen that car parked. And actually, Tim Lay showing as being in pit lane. So he was on an in-lap. Well, I reckon they might have called it and said, hey, look, we're towards the end of our fuel window. Let's just roll the dice. If a safety car comes out on this, we've played it beautifully. So here's car 80, Tim Lay pit. So green flag pit stop, which has been a rarity today. And they'll almost certainly lose a lap through this. 
Oh. Or, or will they? <laughs> so in the space oh, of man. heartbeat, that's just been the best, one of the best yeah. calls of the race. We'll learn more about that because uh, Rollsy's found Tim Way. He's just jumped out of the BMW. ABS problems. What, what What's happening out there? It was all going pretty well, actually. I mean, it's just had an, like an intermittent problem where the ABS light comes on and then the ABS stops working. So unfortunately, it happened down into the chase then and um, it just locked up all the all the tyres. Couldn't couldn't get, get it unlocked, unfortunately. So um, anyway, that's the way it goes. Hairy moment. Oh, not not overly, not overly. I was just trying to get the brake unlocked, you know, so I didn't square the tyres, but I just couldn't get it unlocked. So I, but the tyres were knackered, so I just had to come straight in. One thing that is working uh, pretty well is your pit stop strategy. Uh, tell us about that. Oh well. You know, the boys are just doing what they did last year to help Berwick win the production car championship. They're just doing a solid job. We may not have be the paciest car out there, but um, these these little things, unfortunately, in these races, like a, a ABS light coming on can just ruin your day. So we'll just put our heads down, keep going, and we'll end up somewhere, I hope. I think the Sharons would have hoped that more people had pitted then because I think they were pretty keen to get their lap back. They're not that far away from it with so many cars still on the lead lap. It really is a case of anything can happen in that final hour of the race. Throw all the balls in the air and see where they land at the end of the day, and that's where it is. So we're under safety car. We'll take a break, come back with some explanations and what's going on on the mountain for the high-tech oils back to six hours. You're back at Mount Panorama, it's the High Tech Oils, Bathurst 6 hour for 2017. About to resume with plenty of this race to go. Recovery done for the number 65 CXC Lancer. While we're under the safety car, we should mention that there's been pit stops. Morecambe and Morris both pitted under the caution, and that's elevated Garth Walden in the AMG Mercedes to the race lead. And look at this, down the inside, three wide, Chaz Mostert trying to get past these lap cars as they sort themselves out through turn one and do that little Terry. Jim Polisina, former leader, pitted, now 12th. Sharon on the charge now. 15th. Watch them march up the order. Watch them fly up the order. Andrew Richmond is next target inside of the Camry. Bunch of cars pitting beneath us. So Berwick Linton needs to pass Garth Walton here because he needs to clear. Wow, oh, hold your breath. Two and three wide through the kink at turn three. The run up into the cutting. Marcus Ambrose and Greg Murphy know that <laughs> bit of road well. Just to add to the list of yeah. memories. Um, so for this race to work for Berwick Linton, he's got to pass Garth. He's got to get by the AMG. And yes, they've got a pit stop up their sleeve. And as we explained before, their race will come to them in the final hour because they've got that one stop to make and they can dictate when they put the co-driver in for the run to the flag. But if you're not on the lead lap, you're not going to win this motor race because there's so many cars on the lead lap, it's so difficult to get back on it. At the moment, there is 16 cars currently on the lead lap, but that will change once they all cross the patrol line there, so it all cleanses itself. Walden by 1.9 seconds. That white bonnet going through your shot now is the BMW that's second with Lee Burgess. Then it's James Bella in the Subaru. Carrera Cup game. Races for McElroy Racing. Won the Jim Richards Endurance Trophy in GD3 Cup Challenge a couple of years ago. Handy little talent from the west of Sydney. He and Cameron Hill have flown very much under the radar today. Haven't seen much of them, but they've continued to battle on. Benny Porter is fourth in the number 29 GWR car. Rod Salmon fifth. Kieran Pilsington sixth. Then Vernon, Rickshaw, Luke Sells back up to ninth place. We're watching him carve his way through the field. And then back to Chaz Mostert and Mark Eddy in the TTRS. In fact, Mostert has passed Luke Sell that time by. So Chaz will be up to seventh, you'd think, as they cross the line. Oh, man, three wide. Wow. I say for a lot like I'm surprised. Yeah. How many times have we seen that today? Luke Searle had that thing dead set sideways off that ripple strip just then in Hancock Murray's corner. 
So here's a look, replay down at Hancock turn. Chas Mostert in front. We're watching Luke Searle dive down the inside of a lapped Commodore. That's the Walden entry. Yeah, just up on the exit curb there. Won't be too much of a drama. Unless they've caused some tyre damage with the back of that curb. We've seen here before that cars that use curbs a little bit too liberally can get caught on the back of them. And around pointing the wrong way is a BMW at the exit of turn two. And after the dipper, <laughs> and probably Forest Elbow, and possibly McPhillamy Park, that's not a great place to spin. And Grant Sharon, you know it's Grant because Grant wears glasses, so G for Grant. Uh, he is watching on in pit lane, and they might get another safety car that will help their cause here. I wonder if that BMW can get itself turned around. Ah, so that teed off earlier. So there was contact there. BMW on BMW, that's the Stefan Mobile that got into the back of the 1M and caused it to be pointing in the opposite direction of travel. Do you know, when you're travelling up there at, at, at speed, he's very lucky not to have taken the wall, or it looks like he may have just. Keith Bensley was behind the wheel of that car, in fact, at the time. Oh. Here goes Mostert on his rampage. So this lap, he's passed James Abella. He's passed Lee Burgess. He's about to pass Ben Porter, who's also passed Lee Burgess. And he'll do it at turn one by the looks of it. So Mostert storming his way through the field. He's third. You get the feeling second is only a matter of time. And once again, the RS Focus races its way to the front of the field. Looking to the back of car number 29. Headed up by Rob Woods, who made his debut in the Porsche GT3 Cup last weekend at a very soggy sand down. This is his first visit to Mount Panorama as well, racing with Devash and Padiachi, and also Ben Porter, who's behind the wheel at the moment. Just showing at the moment that Ian Sharon is in fact, no, he's just gained the lap back. He's 10th. They're in the top 10. Oh my goodness <laughs> me. They're in the top 10, they're 50 seconds from the leader. And you know they've got the speed. Extraordinary. Especially when it's quick going up and down the mountain, so it should theoretically be somewhat easy to pass these cars. And a whole bunch of cars actually have just punched out their fastest lap of the race. Garth Walden, last time round, did a 28.27 on lap 75. Chas Mostert did a 27.2 on lap 75. So he's flying. And Kieran Pilkington actually did their car's best lap last time round. It was a 34.9. So they don't have the outright pace. This is Harry. What's Mostert going to do? just sits in behind the AMG at the moment in the battle for second place. So the pace is now hot. Now they've got some green flag running. And uh, quick lap time. So Garth Wall just trying to build this margin. And 14.7 seconds. Tell you what, probably the biggest leading margin in the race so far. There goes Mostert through. He'll grab second place. Hot hatch from Ford V. Hot hatch from Mercedes AMG. Let's see who's quickest in a straight line. Ben Porter won't give this up too easy, and that AMG has got some grunt. We heard Nathan Morecambe talking before that they just don't have the top end they like, and there's a definitive example. So if that's the final lap of the motor race, if that's the fight for the victory, you'd probably give it to AMG, or you'd give it to Chas Mostert because he bombs it down the inside and grabs the spot. You'd probably fight a bit harder if it was the final lap, if you're in the but... What a major dive wow. bomb move. Ah, that's textbook for Chas Mostert. Look out, though. Porter's going to reel him back in again, but that car, that focus, very strong under brakes, will hold that position for now. Will slot himself into second. I tell you what, he might even have to play the defensive card here in just a moment by the time they get back up to Griffin's bed, because, again, that Mercedes is probably going to have the legs. In fact, he might even get the job done a little sooner, but the focus, good under brakes. But now the challenge is going to be as to whether or not Mostert will drive this car and make this focus as wide as it can possibly be as they head up Mountain Straight. How good is this stuff? If you're Ford, you're mad not to be involved in this because how good is this an ad for the Ford Focus RS? Because it's knocking off a Mercedes AMG that's a little bit more expensive than it and it's way up the order from a BMW M4 that's a lot more expensive than it and it's not far off the lead of the motor race. The, the car companies will come to this style of racing, I'm sure of it, with this race as the centrepiece for the revamped Australian production car series. What a good ad for the full focus yeah. How good's this thing? Rolsey, 
Well, it was looking like the, uh, the, the debut of the M4 wasn't going to go well. Everything's turned around now. Back inside the top 10, things are looking good. Yeah, we're back in the top 10 now and we're back on the lead lap, so um, quite happy with that. Everything's going, cross fingers going well for us at the moment, so keep plugging away and see where we end up. What were those early issues and how were they resolved? Oh, look, we had a hose pop off, so we came in and um, we fixed that hose. And, um, yeah, that's all it was. Just took a little bit of while to fix, but, you know, we got back out there and um, just plugged away and see what happens. Well, if he's playing poker, he's not giving too much away about his hand there. Grant Sharon will bring that car home. When is the question of time? I think Brian Vanderwacker might be able to tell more of that. I've just had some interesting text messages come through, and the number of people watching this race is quite amazing. But g'day to Renato Liberto, who's a guru race car driver associated with Italian brands, and I'm not sure what he could bring out uh, to race in this race next year, but he was actually asking the question, any chance of rain? And I know why he'd asked that, because with the way the sun is looking at some of these clouds, it does look a little bit dark, but I can tell you there's nothing on the radar. There is 0% chance of rain occurring in this motor race. Just need someone to go out there and put the hose out. That'd change things up. 15.7 seconds from first back to second. The Auburn brothers here on screen. In fact, they've had a bit of a disappointing day as well, unfortunately for them. Their first stop was about 18 minutes long, so the actual steering wheel actually came off, believe it or not. Speaking of oh dear. weird parts and weird things that go wrong in the race, so they actually had a steering wheel come off their race car, and then they also had a fuel leak at the same time, so unfortunately... Uh, not the day that they've been hoping for. And that's something that you, you you don't want to have happen coming down Conrad Strait, unless, of course, you've got a pair of vice grips in the car you can just grab around the thing and steer that, that, with. That's happened here in the past. I know, I'm sure. Yes. Um, what we're watching at the moment is a very interesting battle between AMG Mercedes and BMW, who Luke Searle dives to the inside of Ben Porter. Now, Ben's due a stop because... Uh, their stint length is agonisingly close to three hours, we're being told. So they might need to get themselves in the lane fairly soon. We'll get Brian to crunch the numbers on that one. I've thrown my stats away. It's just impossible to keep up. Brian's got it covered. Um, so Luke Searle, this is for track position. It's for third and fourth place. Mostert up the road. He's got the gap to the leader down to 13.1 seconds. But Garth Walton's got busy and he's caught Berwick Linton and trying to put that BMW down a lap. And you might think, why is he trying to do that? Well, if I was leading this race, the least, the less cars on the lead lap, the better for me, because there's still so many of them in contention for this motor race. The more that aren't, the better for your hopes towards the end of the motor race. And here these two go again, side by side. No wonder they're watching closely. Their car's getting attacked. And Luke Searle, well, Paul Morris said in pit lane that he thought he was the right guy to bring the car home. So far, so good. Last time round, it gets control line point two, uh, uh, two tenths of a second they were apart. You've got to be careful that you're at this point of the racetrack. Look at how much room they're using. Porter was all the way up to the great then, and then some, as they'll come up to the top at McPhillamy Park again. Well, Ben knows how to get the most out of these cars. He's part of a group of a lot of Australian racing car drivers who do drive a training for Mercedes and AMG in Australia under the leadership of Peter Hackett. So uh, he knows how to get the most out of an AMG A45. He's certainly doing that. That car is moving around considerably under pressure from the BMW, but... Look at this. Lights ablaze, both of them. Still an hour and 31 to go, mind you. Just throw that out there. I think the AMG is going to stretch its legs just a little bit here down Comrade Strait. Ian Sharon, by the way, is now ninth. <laughs> and last time around was the second fastest car on the... No, yes, second fastest car on the racetrack behind Chaz Mostert. So he's 41 seconds from the lead. So five laps ago, he was 50 seconds from the lead. He can do it. He's still an hour and a half to go. It's not like he's just unlapped himself within the final 15 minutes and then it's a, a massive drama to try and get yourself or get a lucky safety car, which is what they needed last year, ironically, uh, to win because they were on the back of the lead lap. Here we go. Great run out of the final corner. A little bit of hip and shoulder this time. And Luke Searle finally looks like he's going to clear Ben Porter in the AMG. The Merck's got better top end, but Searle's got the right driving line into Hell Corner. And finally... 
wrestles P3 away after a war that's lasted three laps. That's been going on for a long, long time, this one, as we got a shot of the Brian Walden machine. In fact, interestingly enough, what sources tell me, it's actually going to be Brian Walden's last endurance event. Oh, really? This weekend, yes. Hanging up the helmet. We're going to take a quick break here at Mount Panorama for the high-tech oils. That the six hour will return shortly. to Mount Panorama, the high-tech oils, Bathurst six hour and to drama. One of the class D favorites, the Pedders Racing Toyota 86, Grant Phillips behind the wheel, American co-driver Michelle Abate in pit lane. There's been contact at the top of the mountain. And this car limping back to pit lane in real dramas. Let's have a look at what happened. So following some B class cars down through the top of the mountain, this is where the Toyota is actually quicker than these cars. The car goes through, ah, putting a lap down. That's the number one Ford Focus. Oh, and there's contact. Contact with car one. And it pushed the Toyota into the fence. And a bit of contact with the number one Ford Focus. And that's a big drama. And that will end the hopes of this car to contend for victory in the race. Oh, 10 seconds, no. no. Smoke from the BMW. Let's just hope that's a tire. All that hard work, and it is, it's a right front. You can see it off the rim. The problem is, it's happened at the start of the lap. They've got to limp their way back around for, well, five and a half Ks now. So they've got a bit of time to spare, but it's going to cost them a lap. It'll drop them back off the lead lap of the race. But as we said, they've still got an hour and 28. So I refuse, I blankly refuse to rule them out because no. Just because no. No. <laughs> it's un Australian, Richard Crow. No, you just you cannot do it on a race like this, the way this race has played out so far. But well, the up and down stories of this race continue and the Sherons have got dramas. We've got another car that's also smoking as well as it's making its way down the entrance to Is this the Heath car Yes it is. Yeah. Lane. So they weren't leading their class. They're a little bit further down actually. Uh, Mark Kane leading the way in the Jimmy Vernon car in Class D, though they have just completed a pit stop. You can see on screen here car 17. 17C, that's the local entry of the Auburn brothers, Blake and Kyle. They've had a terrible day today. Well, when your steering wheel falls off, Benny, uh, it's generally not great. Uh, the fact they can keep it out of the fence uh, without occurring is a... Uh, I, I marked that down as a win. You know, I reckon you'd go home from a day at Mount Panorama and go, well, my steering wheel fell off and kept it out of the wall and finished. Yeah, OK. Solid. If the Sharon Rentals BMW, well, I mean, they're obviously going to have to pit right now. It's going to be literally right on the bubble, I reckon, mm. to get them home. It's going to be right on the cusp. Well, I need, a, I need caution. Yep. Crew, crew were down yeah. here pushing uh, car 52 so that's in Class that. D up the pit lane. So we didn't see, they dropped down the order quite significantly, didn't they? Because they made that second pit ah, stop. Yes, correct. Yep. Yep, yep. So by my maths, uh, Chris Reeves, who currently leads Class D, so they've got two stops completed. So one more compulsory stop to go. That's exactly what he told me at the start of the day. We're yep. not going to buy the safety cars. So they're going to do it on three stops. Again, that's how they won it last yep. year. They did it on three. Their rivals did it on four. Garth Walton, the leading margin down to 6.3 seconds. So Chas Mostert has taken four seconds out of that race lead. Luke Sell still sits in third place. He's 12 seconds behind Mostert. Ben Porter, having been savagely attacked by BMW for four laps and fending it off, sits in fourth place. And Mark Eddy remains P5 in the Audi TTRS. With Lee Burgess in sixth in the DPO BMW. James Abella still seventh in Subaru. Andrew Richmond eighth in that car. So the Andrew Richmond, Carl Reinler car, they're still in this. They're a minute off the lead, but they're still on the lead lap with Carl Reinler to plug in because Andrew's done a very studious job through the middle of this race. You'd think Carl will jump in at the end and bring that car home. Uh, 
So they're certainly not out of contention yet. This is in. Absolutely bang on your numbers, Brian. Comes car 45. So the leader's in pit lane for what we believe will be their last pit stop. They might be good to go right to the very end. 3.1 was the margin. So that puts Chaz Mostert on point once again in car number one. And it becomes the 15th lead change of this race. A lot of them strategy induced, but it's a lead change nonetheless. So they'll fill that car up and they want to get it as full as they possibly yeah. can. But Craig's good to go with driving titles here. Certainly, all good to go. And now car 11, they are also getting to a window as well. So Jack Perkins will jump into that car now too. Let's just bring you up to date with where the classes stand in this race. So we know A1, we know A2. In that invitational class is Bradley Zacker continues to lead the way. They're 22nd outright in their AU Falcon saloon car. Rick Shaw still on point in class C in the Mazda RX-8 and their 12th outright. And class D, Chris Reeves in car three, as we mentioned, with still with one stop to go, which they can take their own time for, be leading class D. Sorry, I just got distracted because there was a Sharon BMW coming into pit lane again. So there was, whether or not that was a scheduled pit stop or an unscheduled pit stop, we'll be finding out very shortly, no doubt. Well, I don't know if that makes it more or less interesting if they're going to be in the mix to win it or not, because yeah. it was certainly going to be interesting, but with the raw speed of that car, it's just, it was almost a case of how quickly would they get to the front. But well, clearly there's more dramas, and this is not a hurried, no. what's going on kind of pit stop. Diving inside, so maybe electronics, looking at ECU units. The Hollywood story we were hoping for is no longer, and it's not going to be for the 51. Daniel Flanagan, Trevor Maloof car either. That car coming to a slow halt and might have possibly have found the tyre barrier somewhere around the track. It's Merrick Maloof behind the wheel, they're 39th. Merrick, I mean, not Trevor. Third in A2. So at least they'll get to pit lane. Last year in the race, everyone had dramas and got it back to the pits. This year, everyone's had dramas <laughs> after the pits. And this might tell us as to why. So they're another victim of the elbow at the top of Mount Panorama. Much better now to have the tyres than yeah. just the concrete wall, which they used to have. But damage just for a brief kiss with the wall. I wonder if there was more earlier than that as the Sharons go into the garage. So after a brave fight back, it looks like the day might be over for the Sharon Rentals BMW, at least from any shot at contending for a victory. Because as the clock winds down, their shot of getting back towards the lead of this race continues to run out. Meanwhile, the battle for the lead. So this is a roll reversal. Yeah. So Craig Baird now needs to stay on the lead lap because he's good to go to the end. The Ford Focus has got a stop to come, a stop of their own timing to get to the end of the motor race. And just in front of them was Berwick Linton, who's in exactly the same position. But Baird would very much like to stay in front of Morecambe here because it will just make their race a little bit easier towards the end to give them that track position they need and hold the charge of car number one, who to me is increasingly looking like the favourites for this race. I don't know if you agree with me, Brian, but the way this race has come to those guys, especially in the second half, and the pace that that car's got, the chase behind the wheel, and trying to pass in ridiculous places that normally only Shane Van Gisbergen in a McLaren tries to go by. It's got speed to burn. They're looking good, aren't they? I mean, we, what's it going to be, though, is that that it's going to be the transit time of 2 minutes and 30 seconds, basically. So that's going to be the margin that we'll have to look for once Chaz Mostert ultimately makes his final pit stop. He's good to go to the end. So, interesting portion of the race. Chaz Mostert, their last bit of that car, 3 hours and 51. We're now at 4 hours and 44. Chaz will be in that car. So they're going to run into the last hour of the race, aren't they? Yep. They can. They've got that flexibility, which means... I mean, if they didn't have to do a compulsory... Yeah, yeah, I mean, that, if it wasn't the compulsory pit stop, they'd be absolute Splash favourites dash. because yep. uh, it'd be a short stop, throw the driver in. Or is Chaz going to go to the end? or is uh... Chaz should be able to go okay. to the end. But it'll be 2 minutes 30. Trying to find a way past that AMG. And, and that 
focus has got Grunt low down. We've talked about that all day. Struggling in the top end. Heard Nathan Morgan talking about that earlier in the race. Let me work on numbers for a moment. Do I'll that. Morgan and Boston, I'll get back to you. So the race has just settled for a little bit, which is good because it gives us a breath and a chance to take an opportunity and just take stock of this field and where they're running. A little bit further back, there's the Andrew Richmond car with Carl Reindler still to come. Still on the lead lap. Holocene is in the same boat in car number seven, the pole performance entry. So by my maths, there'll be, once all these stops worked out, there should still be 12 or 13 cars on the lead lap, I would have thought. Perkins can go to the end, can't he in car 11, so he's good to go. He's currently 12. He's two minutes and three from the lead. So when Most at pits, he's going to end up in front, assuming they stay the way they are relative to each other because it's two minutes and 30 in pit lane. There's Paul Morris on screen now, just taking in exactly what's happening at the moment. So we're there 9.8 seconds behind this car of Chaz Mostert. So if we go green towards the end of the race with the one stop still to go, they're all going to cycle in behind car 45, who's looking in pretty good shape at the moment. But of course, that's assuming it stays green all the way to the end of the motor race. I just wanted to give a shout out to one car. We've seen a little bit of them on screen. They're currently 41st outright. Daniel Sutton behind the wheel. It's the Toyota Camry. Uh, Daniel Williams and Kurt Metcalf sharing the drive with them. They just pounded around all day. Not the fastest car on the racetrack, not the fastest car in their class, but they're 41st outright. They continue to lap and they're looking to get to the end of the motor race. And that would be an achievement in a car that looks like it's come from the uh, car park of Central Bathurst uh, Shopping Mall. <laughs> Not bad, is it? So there's just over an hour to go. The high tech oils, Bathurst six hour. A rush of safety cars at the start. A lot of caution. 28 laps under yellow today. And 10 safety car periods. But we've had a good green flag run and in comes car number one. Blazing through the pin entry. Safety car. There is two. So safety car. Oh, you are joking. <laughs> so they've timed that well. Now, what could that possibly be? That could be the most decisive moment of the motor race. And in comes car 62 as well. So Luke Searle brings his car into the lane. And there's a HSV with smoke everywhere getting the green light. Not that he can see it through the smoke plume. Oh, wow, he's got big dramas. Ben Porter's in the lane too, he was third. So Baird will stay out, and this will help them for fuel economy as well, because they were going to be right on the edge with an hour and a half stint. But this will be good for them. So they'll pick up car 45. And, as we predicted, we've got a motor race for the final hour. The A2 leader stopped on Mount Strait was the reason for this safety car. A bit of angst down there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Something Did about you see get, off, get off the brake pedal. Oh, uh, wow. You know why? Because it's probably burning. I think they've had, they might have seized it too. When you get that heat soak through yep. the expansion of the brake rotors, it runs so hot. And there is the cell car. They look a little bit more relaxed than what's happening back down the lane. So it was car four that stopped. Jamie Hodgson has stopped on Mountain Straight. And Mostert out of pit lane now. And two minutes 36 in the lane. Where do they pull out in relation to Craig Baird? This is also on top of the circuit too. So Baird did to cross the control line and pick up the safety car. So Mostert, oh, they got out in front. Rolsey. I'm with Bob Riley, team manager for car number one. There's a lot of smoke there. Uh, was that a scheduled pit stop? Yes, it was a scheduled pit stop. Just fuel and tyres to the end. But one of the little brake ducts just ignited due to the heat. So the boys just hit it with a fire extinguisher and right to go. Where there's smoke, there's normally fire and there was a lot of smoke there. Yeah, there was a lot of smoke, but the plastic does create a lot of smoke. So uh, it's, it's fine. Everything's good. So does the car and Chaz have what it takes to, to win this race? Uh, certainly, both do, yes, certainly. And what are the instructions now for him uh, to bring it home? Well, that'll depend on what happens with the other competitors, but we'll just drive it as hard as we can to make sure we win. Good luck. Thank you.
Well, the KG Bob Riley, he's not saying much there, but I think he feels reasonably confident about where this car is at. We'll find out. We're going to take a break, come back with more action. And the High Tech Oils Bathurst 6 Hour, right after this. Welcome back to Bathurst. Our coverage of the High Tech Oils Bathurst 6 Hour continues. We're on a race restart now. The race is being led by Mark Eddy. The Audi TTRS is sharing with Tony Olford. They've still got a pit stop to come, but they are the race leaders at the moment. Fast cars working their way through the field. Dramas for an Evo. The pole performance cars just lock the rear brakes going into turn one. That's a big moment in front of a still very large pack. It looks like car six will be able to go again. But there's the leaders, a stop to come, but what a drive from the TT so far. Hopefully they can get that car turned around once this enormous field is passed and we go green right to the end and let this race play out. There's eight tenths between Chas Mostert and Luke Searle and we'll pick them up as they come through this field on the run up to Griffin's Bend. There they are, the leaders in shot now. Red Bonnet on the Ford Focus on the right of screen, working his way past the CXC car. There's the car in second place. This is the fight for what will be the race victory. And just in behind was the A45 AMG. So the top four cars in the motor race covered by about three seconds. Remarkable, isn't it? As there down the inside goes, there's oh. the some Look at Moster around the outside. And Searle, that's important move. Look at that, he's just put two cars now between himself and Luke Searle, so yep, it might have been a daring move, but it's gonna be these little finite seconds towards the back end of this race that's gonna prove very, very crucial. The irony is these four cars at the pointy end have all been very evenly matched on raw speed. The fastest of the lot of them is probably the car that's gonna end up in a net fifth place, which is Carl Reindler in the Andrew Richmond CXC Global Racing Evo Lancer. His fastest lap of the race is a 26.9. The cars in front of him, 28s and 27s. Mostert's done a 27.2. Eddie, the race leader, a 28.6, doesn't have that raw speed. Mark Eddie's pushing on this lap at the moment. Personal best of the first sector and the second sector as well. So look for that 227.6 to be lowered this time by. As he'll be pounding down Condor straight at the moment and not too far away from coming down into Hancock Tyres, Murray's corner. I'm sure Mark Eddy's teammate from last year, Francois Joy, will be watching on. They won their class in a Renault. Uh, they've raced a lot together, those two, in the production car ranks over the years. And in pit lane comes the race leader. So Mark Eddy, after one of his better drives that I've witnessed in his career, he's succeeded in motor racing, has Mark. He pulls the network clothing Audi into the lane from the lead, which is now inherited by Chas Mostert and it'll be Tony Olford who jumps in the TTRS for the run to the flag. What a superb performance by these guys today. One of the drives today, you've got to say, for Mark Eddy, a tremendous stint. Speaking of drives of the day, this wouldn't be too far either for Carl Reidler. I mean, they're still gone from four, uh, yeah. 59th to 5th, but wouldn't they love just one or two more spots and spray some champagne on that Mathis podium? It's funny, I was talking to a couple of people. Oh, oh, I'm oh, hold no, that. he doesn't. Ryler up the inside at the cutting. That's enormous, and he gets through. There's a big slide on the exit. There might have been some paint exchange, but Ryler goes past Craig Baird, and He's is addressing. that a redress? Yes, it is. Let Baird past. So they swap positions over and under again, and it, it's broken. Ryler's car's got damage. So he collected the murk as he went through, and the... The Mitsubishi's got damage and he'll have to limp it back to pit lane. He's got a tyre down. And this is the thing, because the Merck's got good straight line, Carl has to take a risk to pass him in a slow corner where the Evo's stronger, so he dove up the inside of the cutting. Craig saw him coming, gave him room, and we don't know what happened mid-corner, but yeah, there was, there was fisticuffs, there was contact. The mirror on the left-hand side of the Merck's pointing in the wrong way, so... No doubt they, they touched there. Uh, Craig gave him racing room. A, a pass there is uh, a big thing to do, put it that way. 33 minutes to go in the High Tech Oils Bathurst 6 hour. We saw them throw new hand cooked tyres at the DPO Ford at their last pit stop. So rubber's not a concern. Rindler's in pit lane. 
He will need new rubber on that car. And we'll try and get out on the lead lap and at least get that car to the finish after an amazing fight back today. But we have got a motor race on. It's between Chaz Mostert, the defending champion of this race, and Luke Searle, a guy who's been racing for a long time through the Super Touring days. Hugely talented racing car driver, but looking for the biggest win in his career with a teammate who's won the 1,000 and who's won the 12 out and looking for a six hour win to add to his remarkable CV. Nothing between BMW and Ford at the pointy end of the race. And another Bathurst Enduro comes down to the final stanza. This is for the lead of the race. Couldn't stop that car any harder. Chaz Mostert is driving the wheels off this Ford, but at the moment it looks like the BMW is faster. 31 to go. Just using that uh, back marker car to his advantage there, he was waving them through, but that's given just a little bit more of a gap to Chaz Mostert as they go back up the mountain again. Chaz oh, wow, huge explosion on pit straight under the high-tech oils bridge. It'll definitely be a safety car. It's Craig Baird, an enormous fire. The car's exploded. Baird's got to get out of there. That's a very, very big detonation. And there's still flames looking at that car. Craig's out. He's okay. My goodness, that is huge. Massive detonation. I think he's been off the road. I think he it had exploded running down into Hancock Tyres Corner. And we'll have a safety car with 20 minutes to go. Yep, safety car. But that was a, an enormous fire. Craig's out. He's all right. The car just pulled off to the side of the road. But there was smoke down by the tyre bundles down at Hancock Turn at, at Murray's. And I think that car was off in the gravel trap before it ended up there. But it was an enormous plume of smoke out the back of the AMG. We'll show you that now. So down into Hancock Turn. Watch the silver car under brakes. Following the bit, no, top of the screen. Now, huge detonation. So the car doesn't stop, so it's launched an engine gets the thing turned in. No, it didn't run off in the gravel track. It was just the smoke plume managed to end up there. I mean, that's like a smoke screen from one of the old Batman movies, isn't it? That's extraordinary. And then watch the flame. When he gets the car stopped, and great presence of mind from Berto to get the car pulled, the driver's right, out of harm's way, because if you're behind that, you have no idea what's in front of you. And then a huge plume of smoke and They've got that car out, the, the, the fire stopped. The fireys did a great job to get on that yep. as quickly as they possibly could as well. And it's probably a good spot to actually pull that car up because it's right underneath the flag marshal's point there on the main straight. But dear, oh dear, that's probably up there with one of the biggest fires, unfortunately, we've seen up here at Mount Panorama. Rosie, Garth Walden, uh, that was a horrible incident there. Uh, is he okay? Yeah, mate, uh, the main thing is Craig's out and he's okay. Uh, I saw him jump out of the car, so it's just disappointing, mate, for everyone involved, the whole team, and um, Craig was doing a great job. Um, I feel sorry for Ron watching her back at home, but it is what it is. Do you know what happened? No, it looks like an engine failure by the look of it. A lot of smoke and a bit of fire at the end, so I'm not quite sure. The car has been running great all, great all afternoon. We had a little, uh, few little issues this morning, uh, sorry, in the start of the race, and um, the car was quite good this afternoon. And, uh, yeah, we're just hoping to bring it home. Well, that's motorsport. I'm sure he'll be back to fight another race, uh, so let, let's hope he's okay when he comes in. Yeah, cheers, mate. What a motor race. What a day under the Hitachi Bridge. Ford Focus RS versus BMW M135. Don't worry about the lap cars. It's just these two now. They've got Bathurst to themselves to fight it out for the high-tech oils Bathurst six hour. It's a brilliant restart from Luke Searle. Mostert has to defend straight away. Move to the middle of the road. They'll turn into turn one. Trying to feel the tire pressure in the hand cooks. Sell using all of the road at Hell Corner. And up the hill they go. That's the DPO squad watching on. Mostert on the inside of the racetrack. He's got a BMW in his toe. Luke needs to be smart about this. You've got time and you've got clear racetrack. And you know you're better down Conrod. Griffin's bent. Let's see what Mostert does across the top. Nothing short of spectacular across there today. 
the liberties he taking with lap cars paid off before it got in margin. It won't help him now. We know the focus is better across there, but we know the BMW coming down the hill will be stronger. Searle so was using all the exit road then coming out of the cutting and he used it as well coming out of Griffith's Bend. You can see though, this is where Chas Monster is going to make up his time. You watch him going over at the top into McPhillip. It's going to be sideways. You betcha, there it is. He tips it in the left hander. He'll use a bit of exit ripple strip here and that margin is now starting to ex expand as you would expect as they come down the hill once again. The worst cutaway in history. The teams hate that. They absolutely hate it. We love it. Entertaining for us. Oh, gee, Luke just got the thing stopped into the dipper there. It looked like he understeered a bit. Most Problem is, away, Brian. he's not going to be close enough, is he? By the time they get down to the chase, the, the focus is too good going across the top of Mount Panorama. It's just that commitment he's got across there. The way that car is hooked up. Out of the elbow they go. Let's watch down Conrad. The BMW is a couple of k's an hour quicker in a straight line, but Mostert may have just broken the back of this race by being the most committed he's ever been across the top of the mountain. There's eight minutes and 45 seconds to go. And the defending champions have found themselves back in front from one of the teams that have supported production car racing for a very long time, the Rochelle Express crew out of Newcastle. They're P2. Mossed it with a little bit of breathing room. The official margin as they cross the line is 1.2 seconds. And it's a 2.25.9 for Chaz Mostert. It's his fastest lap of the motor race on the restart. That is an extraordinary lap time to a 2.26.9 for Luke Searle. So Mostert punches out his car's fastest lap, the lap after a restart on cold hand cooked tyres. That is amazing. The shot of Nathan Walker was like, get out of here, Chas, that's <laughs> nuts. That is absolutely incredible. But that's what he needs to do at the moment to hold this race. And you can see already that margin from what it was a lap ago has certainly extended. And Mostert now is starting to put his ascendancy on this race with only, well, seven and a half minutes to go. I tell you what, Ryan Simpson's catching Devash and Padiachi as well. So the number seven Mitsubishi is hauling in the number 29 Merck for the final spot on the podium. So that might yet be up for grabs yet. Not that this Not leading battle is done with either. And they will get traffic. You can almost bank on it. The leader's just crossed the start finish line now, and these guys are up at the John Hinksman Vista. So it'll be a lap or two, but they're going to get there before the end of the race. Just to throw another curveball into it. It's going to be intense, and it's going to be ebbing and flowing like you could not believe. If anything, Chaz needs to build that margin now, because by the time they do hit lap traffic, then that might just evaporate, and that's where, he, again, he'll need to be forceful. I can't believe that lap from Chaz. You don't often see in endurance races the fastest lap set right at the very end, especially in production car endurance racing. But that's what he's done. What a testament to this crew. The DPO squad, we heard from Bob Riley early on. Nigel Bolling, who's built more than his fair share of production cars over the years. And Barry Morecambe and the team have put together a really strong program. This is the longest this car's ever run. It did a shakedown at Wakefield Park before this weekend, and that's about it. It is a brand new race car and it had dramas yesterday. They qualified 16th and uh, with turbo boost issues, they had no boost in quality, it did a 30.0 and they were 16th and a long way down the order. Bear in mind, they won this race from 11th last year. So at the moment we're on for, for this race being won from outside the top 10 on two occasions. That one's won the 12 hour from outside the top 10. It's a cool stat itself, isn't it? Headlights ablaze as we're getting later in the day at Mount Panorama on this Easter Sunday. Well, this should be the fight for third place. The BMW goes through on Ryan Simpson, but Ryan was closing in on Devash and Padiachi here. Chaz Mostert, 225.82, fastest lap of the motor race for him, but going with him is Luke Searle. Does a 25.85, Luke Searle has just gone faster than he qualified, and he qualified second. This is some kind of drive from Luke. He is driving his heart out and he's kept the gap at 1.3 seconds. This is still very much anyone's motor race. And they're at lap record pace, literally lap record pace at the front of the field. Mostert sets the fastest lap of the day on lap 110. 
and Searle goes with him punch for punch. And the little BMW has not given up yet. And there's a feel good story to either one of these cars to win this motor race. But what a display of motor racing at Mount Panorama. Just got a feeling here that Luke Searle's just pulled a little bit back on Chaz Mostert over the top there. I feel I'm in agreement with you, absolutely. To the first sector, Chaz Mostert, one minute, point two exact. And then just behind him, you had Searle, 59.7. To the first sector alone, Searle was half a second quicker. This is a great motor race. The water car race. Chaz has got that thing as hooked up as I've ever seen a race car at this place. Lap record on lap 110. The fastest laps for both these cars on lap 110. They're punching out qualifying numbers. It's incredible at the end of a six hour production car race. I'll tell you what, if Searle can do this for another lap or two, this sort of pace, he's going to be close enough to have a lunge at Chaz Mostert. Look at it now. This might just be the moment. Mostert, the car seems to be slowing down the him. inside. Here comes Searle, a change for the lead with four minutes left in the great race of the high tech oils. Back the six hour. Luke Searle is your new race leader. Mostert's not done with yet. Good run out of the chase. Searle will have to defend into Hancock Corner. Chaz will send it left and then right. Right on the edge of braking, the brake discs glowing. A change of the lead with four minutes to go. The BMW is in front and we're running out of laps. What next? What's Chaz got left? There's got to be something more for car one. Surely that's not it. From everything we've seen from them today, from passing lap cars on the grass at the metal grate, he will have another go. If he can get a good run across the top, he will have another go. Forest Elbow might just have to be the moment for him as they turn it back into Griffin's Bend once again. Not too much time left in this race. How much has Chaz Mostert got left in this car to have a lunge at Luke Searle? I tell you what, he pushed hard at the restart to get a margin across the top. He's going to have to push even harder this time by. Luke Searle has driven the race of his life and he's about three minutes away from a race win at Bathurst. Right, Mostert. This is where that car's better. What's he got? On lap record pace at the end of the high tech oils, Bathurst six hour. And an extraordinary day on the mountain. He's reeled him in a little bit. He's reeled him in a little bit more. But will he be close enough to have a go at the elbow? That's the only place I can think of. He's just gonna have to send it down the inside and then hope that he can hold on down Conrad straight. But I don't know if he's got enough. The only benefit now, if anything, is he's gonna have a little bit of a slipstream coming down Conrod straight, so it might just help the top end speed ever so slightly for Chaz Molster. He's certainly not close enough at the moment, and time is running out. Chaz Molster has led this race for the second half pretty well much, but with four minutes left to go, unfortunately, it's not within the ballpark for them right now. I'm wondering if something's happened to that car. It's just seemed to be losing speed as it goes down mountain straight. Obviously, the Beamer is quicker. But don't forget, gentlemen, the race for third place is still on as well. Yeah, it is. And Ryan Simpson's 1.9 behind Abash and Padiachi. The BMW pulls away. The focus is limping. What's going on? They've got to limp this car home. There's not too long to go. It should be the second time after the control line, after 5.58 local, which we're at now. So there's a minute on the clock. There's Paul Morris. He's going to make the treble. It looks like they're going to make the treble. The gap has extended, Mostert across the line, it's five seconds. He's got to bring it home now. Mostert was near 60 kilometers per hour, slower going down Conrod straight that time by. So something is certainly not right at the moment with this number one car after six hours of racing just about, with checkered flag just about in sight, Chaz Mostert is limping this car home. This is the last lap of the high tech oils, bath the six hour. Paul Morris on the verge of history. Mostert limping home. Dare I? 231.3 last time round. Dare I say this is maybe is a, a fuel conservation issue? That maybe they are out of fuel. That's a good point, Benny. Hadn't thought of that. It, and, and, it and, could be. and if so, on the last lap of, of another endurance race here at Mount Panorama. Or it could be a result of punching out a lap record on the 110th lap of what's going to be a 113 lap motor race. Last lap 
of the High Tech Oils Bathurst Six Hour. And it's been amazing. And this little team, the Rochel Express team, they've been racing BMWs for as long as I've been watching car racing. Back in the super touring days, Luke Searle would never qualify on a Saturday and would rock up on Sunday and start from the back of the field as a young guy and race his way to the front of the Independence Cup in that category. They've moved to production cars and they've raced sporadically, but nothing like this has come their way. And Paul Morris won the super cheap auto Bathurst 1000 when we thought it would never be a thing with Chas Mostert in 14. He's won the 12 hour and he's about to add a high tech oils Bathurst six hour and be the first ever to sweep the major endurance races at Mount Panorama. The BMW heads down Conrod. There's the focus. And it's been an amazing day. And this is set, uh, third place. That's for the final spot on the podium. Ryan Simpson throwing everything he can at the AMG. But the leader will be soon to the checkered flag for Luke Searle and Paul Morris and the Rachel Express team. An unlikely result, but what a welcome winner. Luke Searle and Paul Morris win the High Tech Oils back the six hour with a pass for the lead in the final five minutes. And that man has won the Bathurst Triple. And that is a great motor race. What wow. an effort, what an effort. Paul well Morris, done, there he is on screen. <laughs> Just loving every minute of this one. I tell you what, there's probably a fair bit of emotion attached to that one as well, because for him, this is a remarkable victory. It's place has bitten him for year after years, and now all of a sudden he's got a couple of Bathurst wins to his name. An incredible drive. The Antunis Salmon. Mercedes Benz makes it home. There's the James Abella, Cameron Hill, Subaru that makes it to the finish just inside the top 10. A little Alpha got home as well, which is great to see. They've preserved along all day. There's Brian Walden. Looks like if the rumours are true, he'll hang up the helmet after today. He'll do it with a class victory. The mighty Commodore makes it home. That's a great result. There's the Rob Rubis, Todd Hazelwood car. Class C winners in this race. Outstanding performance from them. Those little BMWs, they've been around a little while, but man, do they just keep going and going. Let's go down to pit lane. Here's Rolsey's talking to the winner, Paul Morris. Paul, you look ecstatic. Congratulations. Six hour winner with Luke Searle. How are you feeling? Uh, just stoked for Luke, really. He's, he's one of Australia's best drivers, but he's one of those guys that slipped through the net, you know. He never quite got a, got a professional drive, but man, did he wheel that thing, that car today. And uh, we spoke before, he asked me, is he the right guy to have it in the car at the end of the day? And uh, you just saw he was for sure. <laughs> and you just further etched your name in uh, motorsport history, especially Bathurst history. Uh, that is the Bathurst Endurance three-peat. Yeah, it's awesome. I can't believe it. it's good. So, and uh, just, you know, great place to come and race and great bunch of guys. Look, all volunteers here. Um, and to be able to put a bunch of guys together and work together as a team, Everyone's got day jobs and you come here and win a car race like this, it's, it's pretty cool. So let's recap the final results of the High Tech Oils Bathurst 6 hour. It's the Searle and Morris BMW, Morecambe and Mostert defend their win with second place. Holocena and Simpson on the podium in controversial circumstances. Then the BMW, a couple of Mitsubishis, the Alford Eddie TT, a lap behind in the end, but they led the race in the closing stages, which was an outstanding result. And the class fights all the way throughout Sterling Morris, the A1 class, Bagwana, Lane and Simon's home in A2. And well done, Perkins and Burgess, the B1 winners in that BMW that just finished a lap off the lead. Lots of happy class winners with the High Tech Oils Bathurst 6 hour. It's time to go to that famous Bathurst podium. Here's Brian Vanderwacker to introduce our winners. Let's get it underway with your third place outright and also in A1. How about it for car number seven, Jim Policina and Ryan Simpson. <laughs> We'll move on as well to second out, right in second in Class A1. How about it for Nathan Morecambe and Chaz Mostert? How about it though? Save the applause. Here we are for the outright winners of the 2017 High Tech Oils Bathurst 6 hour, Luke Searle and Paul Morris. Luke, I'm going to grab you first, mate. 
What an unbelievable final stint there towards the end. I mean, that was incredible. Talk us through what was going through your mind. I just had to get him. Um, there was nothing going through my mind. Um, he was in front of me and I wanted to pass him, but wow, he drove the wheels off it. And uh, if he didn't have that small problem at the end, he would have won. So I can't, I can't thank Paul enough. I can't thank my father enough for buying me a car and paying for me to race. My father-in-law, Barry Graham, for setting up a brilliant car. My wife for letting me race. Thanks everybody for turning up. Awesome. And all my crew guys, thanks. Awesome. Well, there's Luke Searle. He's a happy man and so he should be. He's won an incredible motor race. That's all the time we've got. And that wraps up the High Tech Oils Bathurst 6 Hour for 2017. But don't worry, this race will be back on the Easter long weekend in 2018. We'll see you then.